All right, and we are live, or at least I am live. I'm hoping I'm live. That uh, that is the hope. So, hey there, finger guns. Thank you, uh, Master Exploder L14. Ed J, good evening, good sir. Good evening, J. It's nice to see you. Mr. ER is here as well, doping it out. I mean, you know, if I had a, uh, if I actually, uh, you know, liked marijuana and wanted to take a bong hit, I probably would take one right now. You know what I'm saying? But uh, no, not really. I, I, I wouldn't trust me. <laughs> What's up, folks? How to get an INFJ to be enthralled by you? Well, maybe you should demonstrate loyalty to that INFJ, uh, Tita, Tina Protsenko, I think is her name. But yeah, like seriously, um, it's all about demonstrating loyalty to them and appreciation to those INFJs for sure. And uh, you'll get everything you're looking for. So let's see what we got tonight. Yeah, Chase's Choice. And let's do backspace and then question and answer. Yes, got an old question answer. And uh, basically the format is I choose which questions to answer. Let's see if your question is cool enough because let's be straight. A lot of people ask the same question over and over and over. And I'm just not down. I'm seriously not down for that. So not down. So yeah, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of not uh, not ideal. So it is what it is. Maybe I can get my microphone thingy-majig a little bit closer here. So yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let's get down to it, folks. Q and A. I will decide the questions, and uh, I'll be uh, doing this directly from the YouTube feed tonight, not necessarily desc Discord. So uh, like our typical Q and A session. So we're just gonna get down and dirty with it tonight, folks. So let's see. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's in the left channel because my microphone is on the on like my right side. I don't know. Uh, is that what's happening? Do I need to like like scream in the microphone or something you know what i'm saying i it's, uh, who knows who knows what it is but uh i'll definitely like adjust my position here um let's see so i'm more facing the microphone and you guys simultaneously and uh we'll get that uh figured out so um all right Okay, so uh, DUC Duck says, INTP diagnosed with schizoid and schizotypal recently. Any thoughts on this? No, I have no thoughts on that because I am not a psychiatrist and I don't talk about, uh, you know, mental disorders. I, this is psychology. And for some reason, people assume psychology is the same as psychiatry and, and it's not. And that's kind of like why, like, I'm not an expert there. Don't ask me to tell you about borderline personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder or any of that. Like, I have no clue. I am not that cool, you know? So uh, that's just not like what I'm going for. So, so yeah, let's see that. Um, cool. All right. Thank you, uh, Jay, for telling me about the sound. I'm always concerned about audio more than anything because I, like, uh, I like audio a lot better, so. Um, and uh, Ryan Whiteman uh, asks, can you teach us how to type through identified cognitive axes? Like, are there specific words you listen out for? Yes, Ryan. Yes, there is. And uh, Ryan, uh, that is available in season 18. We're going to be talking about cognitive mechanics. And that is a few episodes away. We're going to be doing diving deep into season 19. And of course, like, I kind of want someone within, in the audience to ask, well, where the hell have you been, Chase? Like, seriously, where have you been? And uh I have been uh, walking around with my head up my butt trying to like fix things because you know we had the website go down it's been really finicky recently we had DNS caching issues it's just been it's just been really hard and I'm kind of like the only data center infrastructure expert on the team so it's kind of up to me to make sure that that server is up so I had to spend like like way too much time trying to get that fixed so that's why I haven't been around. That's also why uh, How to Social Engineer INTPs hasn't even released yet. That's why that hasn't happened, uh, among other things. So it's it's been um, it's been a little bit difficult. Uh, but I did get a new microphone, 
so that I can actually stand in front of the green screen to like film. No, that's cool. And I'm working on a, a kind of outline system to make sure that like all of my videos are kind of the same moving forward. And I'm just gonna create a system. That way production is a lot easier and it's higher quality. So I get stuff out faster. And I'm, I'm mostly done with that, but I keep getting interrupted by like the most random things. So anyway. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yes, I am hella stressed, Natalie Comfort. I definitely am, uh, but uh, hanging in there. Uh, is personality type and psychiatry related? I, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, Ahmed, SH, it is definitely. Uh, and by the way, folks, if I miss your question, like just ask it again, because I'm only paying attention to the active feed in the live stream. I'm not gonna scroll up. So if I miss your question, you're probably gonna wanna have to ask it again. Just give you a heads up on that. So, um, but yeah, back to uh, Ahmed uh, SH, is personality type or psychiatry related? Yeah, it's kind of related because I mean, psychiatry is related to psychology, personality type is related to psychology, and some personality types are more likely to be misdiagnosed with certain mental disorders than others, like ADD and ADHD, etc. My only issue with psychiatry is misdiagnosis. Misdiagnosis is the problem, right? And that's kind of like my issue with it, so. We'll kind of see how that goes. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I don't know why the audio only seems to be coming from left channel. Could someone help me fix that? I'd appreciate that because I'm not an expert by any means. Um, and I don't know why that is the case. So uh, tips for an INTJ passing through a bad situation. What kind of bad situation, Aerith, are you talking about? And... Um, if finishers are focused on finishing things, why are they movement and not control? Well, control was being outcome faced, but uh, I mean, the thing is though, is that like it's looking for the best outcome, whereas like it may not be the best outcome. So finishers are still going to get an outcome, but it's not necessarily the best. You see what I'm saying? Like that's kind of the difference between, you know, control versus movement and being a finisher, right? They're, they're committed to finishing, but finisher types are well, they're willing to cut corners to get there, whereas a control type is not so willing to cut corners. So just kind of keep that an idea, uh, you know, in mind for that. Um, uh, so that was Ethan uh, Euro with a question. Um, are ENFJs the most extroverted of all the types because of FE here and SE child? Maybe. I mean, I could I could argue that. I could also argue that for ENTJs as well. So uh, there's there's some options, and I could also argue that with ESFPs. Uh, so it, it just it just really depends. Um, no, I did not do the video about the archetype names that we've chosen. Uh, we are going to be doing that in the future as soon as I can get away from doing admin work uh, for the channel and the website, and have somebody else do admin stuff for me, and then uh, then I'll be able to push out content more fat uh, like a lot more efficiently so ever met an extraordinarily intelligent esfj david smith asks and yes i have intp focused uh, they are absolutely brilliant engineered a lot of really nice uh, solutions that increased other people's personal comfort like certain kinds of furniture etc it was actually really cool uh, to have the opportunity to meet them for sure um how about actually reading and learning instead of coming on with a bias i don't know uh, what that means, Breezy. Uh, can you describe an unhealthy INTJ super ego? I will do that in season 19. I'm not going to be doing it on this stream uh, for sure. Uh, Nara Fujita uh, says, do people with the same interaction types and temperaments have better compatibility? That's a good question. So when you're thinking in terms of compatibility, uh, we actually did this in the uh, like two CSJ conferences ago. Where we actually talk about the pillars of romantic compatibility. Uh, it's something that we're gonna be talking about a little bit more later, but the pillars of romantic compatibility is cognitive synchronicity. While it is primary, there are secondary traits that also matter. So it's not always cognitive synchronicity that is necessary for, um, for like types or types of people like golden pairs, for example, to be in a relationship. Golden pairs have the highest cognitive synchronicity, but then there, and which is pretty good for nature, but there might be nurtural issues as well. There might actually be, you know, someone who's had like personal experience in life, et cetera, where it's kind of like, okay, well, with that being said, uh, 
you know, hey, uh, I may, I may, I may be very, you know, shadow focused, and as a result, I can use extroverted thinking better. Uh, so I don't necessarily need to be in a relationship with an extroverted thinker because I got that base covered, right? So then that person will want to be with someone who's more subconscious focused, and that may take them outside of their golden pair, right? So uh, that's that's what happened to me with my with my um, um, you know with my relationship because um, like you know I'm married now, uh, you know having having that opportunity, uh, you know. It, it's it's not a golden pair, but there's there's plenty of reasons as to why that is the case, you know. And cognitive synchronicity, while it's important, while it's primary, it's not always the end all be all like people think it is. So, all right. So, Princess T, is it possible for an ESTJ to hate work and want more freedom? If so, what does that indicate? It usually indicates that they're not able to draw status or achievement from that job. It's also because they feel unwanted. And then as a result of that, it's like, fine, I'm just going to do whatever I want if I'm not wanted, etc. That's a, co that's a cognitive orbit activation that's very typical with ESTJs who, where their ego is not being fed properly based on the environment that they're within. So hopefully it answers your question. Um, can an INTJ become extrovert? Yes, it can by developing its ESFP subconscious or even its ENTP shadow. Uh, Dave Hattower says, can a person change from one type into another during a lifetime, year, week, day? Sometimes I don't feel like I act nor my normal INTP self. Is it possible to bounce back and forth? Have you not watched anything about cognitive transitioning? Uh, I recommend watching like the final few episodes of, um, let's see here, uh, season one, talking about the four sides of the mind, as well as the final episode of season two. Just go to the playlist and you'll get a lot more information about how cognitive transitioning actually works, which we have been talking about right now uh, within, uh, uh, within season 17. So uh, awesome. And uh, what sources do you have on cognitive uh, shifting? I lost that one for some reason. Uh, than just self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know what you're even talking about. Look up inverse theory, uh, Shane Wilson. Maybe that'll help. Uh, okay, so let's move forward. How, okay, so Oscar asks, how does an INTJ make an ENTP interest in you? Well, maybe you should be friendly and give that ENTP a good experience and make them comfortable. Help solve their problem. ENTPs are people who have unlimited amounts of problems that need to be solved that they themselves cannot solve. So help them find the perfect system to try to solve their issue. And then they will, it will generate loyalty within your ENTP, basically. Uh, Gamoji asks, would ENTP shadow with SE inferior look like an ESTP? If an INTJ wants to emulate ESTP ego, can they emulate it all the time? Uh, ENTP shadow with SE inferior, you mean like SE demon? Uh, no, the answer to that question is no. Um, what do I think about Freud's actual definition of the superego as well as the subconscious? Uh, some of his definitions are partially accurate, but mostly wrong. Uh, that's what I think about Freud. I'm more of a Jungian. I'm kind of stay away from Freud as much as I can. Um, so let's see. Can triple directs ever come off and form? Of course they can. Uh, you know, uh, they can with their, with their superego. It happens all the time. Um, Shane Wilson, yes, my definitions seem different, but they're also more accurate. So, I, by the way, like people who have this point of view of like, oh, C.S. Joseph, you know, what you say is not, doesn't match what everyone else says. I don't care. I don't care in the least. Of course, what I'm going to say is going to be different from everybody else. I'm an ENTP. I'm an originator. That's what I do. I originate things. You know, it's just not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so based on that, just uh, please be aware that like, just because other people uh, you know, like, you know, because who are you going to reference me with? Who are you going to verify my work with? Like, just who exactly are you going to do that? Well, not very many people. Of course, you could check my sources like Dr. Linda Behrens, uh, as well as, um, uh, you know, Dr. John Beebe or Stephen Montgomery, Mark Hunziker, Dario Nardi, uh, Kiersey, etc. You could check all those source material out. 
But like when it comes to things like the four sides of the mind and a lot of the other things that are specific to me, uh, you know, and, and also some of that content also is also specific to my mentors, like outside of that, like, no, like you're not going to find any other resources to verify whether or not I'm true or not. So, you know, that just leaves me, you know, Galileo, Galileo telling everybody else in the psychological field that the world is not flat. And then, of course, everyone in the psychological field within their own little dynasties that they have, that means I just have to get shot by them, apparently, or crucified for having different ideas. I mean, Galileo was murdered, after all. So, uh, like, what do, you, what do you want me to say? You know, so the point is, is that just because you can't find very much research about what I'm saying elsewhere does not necessarily mean you can automatically assume I'm wrong. Just throwing that out there. So, all right, can INTJs be good at parkour? Absolutely they can. That's an interesting question. So, okay. So then uh, what are the differences between INTP males and INTP females? Uh, the differences are based on their priorities. So a priority, uh, I recommend watching uh, season 13, where it talks about King, Warrior, Magician, Lover and the mature masculine versus the mature feminine. And just look at how like priorities based on like what people are looking for, you know, Males are typically more focused on the big things of life, whereas females are more focused on the little things of life. And it doesn't mean that big things or little things are any less important from each other. It's just a different focus, and they're just as valuable as the other, basically. And it's just it's just another example of yin and yang equilibrium. So I'd recommend checking out Season 13 uh, playlist on this channel to answer your question. So let's see. Okay. So what are the differences? Uh... Okay, so what are the differences? Yeah, guys, like do your best to at least not spam, but I mean, I will, I will miss your question every now and then. Like if it's getting spammy, you know, then it's just gonna like, that's just how it's gonna be. But, you know, just try to like be respectful of other people on the stream because there's a whole bunch of questions. So, so no worries. We're just trying to make sure like no one gets uh, spammed here. Okay, is there a way for an INTP with an emotivist and negativist attitude to improve his outlook on life? Uh, yes, uh, be helpful to somebody else. Like seriously, be helpful. If an INTP is not helping or being supportive to somebody else, they're not getting stronger, they're not getting more intelligent, they're basically a waste of space at that point. So you need to commit yourself to others and as an INTP. And that's basically how you get over those, uh, those uh, ways of thinking, basically, as I would say. Um, what's uh, so Boris Van Bordes uh, Van Droof says uh, Chase what is a good example of a healthy loyalty check for somebody with NE nemesis ooh that's a great question oh love that question okay so I'm actually going to whiteboard that you know may as well you know so uh, we got uh, NE nemesis right here so we got NI we got SE and then we got NE, and then we have SI, and this person is an INJ, uh, and hopefully I'm not having like too many dropped uh, frames here, and it comes back. So let's see, hopefully it just keeps going. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, having dropped frames, a little bit of dropped frames. But, um, so any nemesis, so looking at the any nemesis here on the little whiteboard we have, any nemesis is kind of an issue. Uh, we want to actually do the loyalty check here, you know, a healthy loyalty check. And it basically is, are you testing the structural integrity or, you know, are you giving someone an experience to how they react? Because here's the difference. Like, I'm going to assume you're behaving a certain way. So then I make decision, right? So I make a judgment or decision, right? You know, whereas uh, when you're looking at SE and Fury with a loyalty check, not going to assume, but I will do something, you know, I will do something, and then I will see, uh, see how you react, right? And that's basically the difference between the two, okay? So when you're doing a loyalty check, don't do it from the point of assuming that they're doing wrong ask questions and see how they react to those questions. Don't assume they're lying. So that's like one of the biggest things, especially for like I, like for NFJ, STP, Quattro, they really hate it when you jump to conclusions about their intentions. 
uh, because it's just another sign that you don't value them that much to them. That's how they take it. So based on that, go out of your way to make sure that you're asking questions instead of assuming. Because if you assume that's any nemesis or any demon in some cases uh, or, or any trickster, that doesn't really work out. So just be really careful. Don't assume. And then as a result of that lack of assumption, verify. And then you bring in your child function to verify what it is they're actually doing. And over time, you'll see a pattern of behavior, right? As you observe, if you observe that pattern of behavior, you're good to go. So hopefully that, uh, that answers that question. So let's erase the board here. And uh, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, so thank you, Bordies, for that uh, thing. So, so I have a question, how do I find my ego type? I'm trying to learn the functions and types, but it work. Uh, so uh, this is LeezyJ20. LeezyJ20, use the type grid. Go to csjoseph.life and then wait 30 seconds after you're there and then a pop-up will come up, put in your email and you'll be emailed the type grid and you can use the type grid yourself uh, for that man. And Chris Try can ENTP, INTP be top athletes with SI child and inferior? Um, yeah, they can be if they're subconscious focused. Uh, don't really see that often with INTPs. That's super rare. It can happen, but it's like mega rare. Okay. So let's see. I have not watched Mindhunter. I, I don't have time to watch television. I'm too busy trying to produce content for this community. I wish I could. Okay, so... Um, so... Uh, Shane Wilson, all of my uh, sources... Uh, like go towards my current theory and then some of them I don't. I'm not saying that I don't use aspects of Freud. Like I'm not claiming that. So, but I'm not going to say everything that Freud said is correct as much as not I can say everything Jung said is correct. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not gonna, you know, do that. Uh, so let's see. Uh, can you talk more about how expert intuition as a tool function works? Uh, is it an unconscious process? No, not necessarily. Like. All the time, I'm talking to I'm talking to Railgun, and it's like, hold on, I'm time traveling right now, and it's because like I'm using expert intuition to travel to various points in time, and I can use my introverted sensing to do it as well. I could travel to my own past, or I could travel into everyone's collective future in some possibility, and and observe basically endless possibilities or alternate futures based on the information and data that I have now to prognosticate as a result. And that's basically expert intuition. I'm looking into alternate futures. I can look into my own future as well, but my own future is very limited scope, whereas introverted intuition has a very high scope of one's own future, but a very limited scope of everybody else's future. This is why the uh, MBTI community or the Jungian analytical psychology community often uh, uh, misrepresents what the true definitions of expert intuition or introverted intuition actually are. So, okay. Uh, uh, the the psycho cyber person. How can you tell if you mistake your subconscious shadow superego for your ego? You mentioned before that it's possibly stuck in one of the four sides of the mind from a traumatic childhood. Uh, basically, uh, sometimes you might need to have somebody other than yourself figure it out. Because remember, like even I wasn't able to type myself. I had to rely on external sources because. Remember, folks, just because you have an internal idea of who you are doesn't necessarily mean that the external idea of who you are matches, right? It's important that you have both perspectives available to you so you can ascertain the truth. And again, this is why we use the type grid because it has multiple points of verification all the way across. And then as a result of the type grid, you'll actually be able to make those decisions. So uh, funnily enough, I actually had a meeting today going over uh, the test and getting the test, uh, basically a prototype of the test built. Uh, so went through all the concepts and whiteboarded it uh, and uh, we're getting our test ready so that uh, you guys will be able to have the opportunity of using that tool on a regular basis. Uh, so uh, we'll be making that available to everybody in the very near future. So, so uh, okay. Uh, Russell Thomas, uh, see other Q&A episodes to answer your question. Um, Okay, so how can an INFJ switch between more heavy TI and FE use quickly? Uh, it's basically whether or not your extroverted feeling parent function is actually developed. And if your parent function is not developed, well, then you're actually gonna be lacking in personal responsibility. So remember, there is a parent function coming out of, or a main auxiliary function coming out of each four sides of your mind. 
and the parent function of the ego for an INFJ is extroverted feeling, the parent function of the shadow or unconscious is known as the critic function, or in that case, it would be introverted feeling. And then, but then if you look in the superego, well, what is that? Well, then it's actually extroverted thinking, right? Or if you go into the uh, uh, subconscious, uh, it's actually uh, introverted thinking, right? So it, it just gives you a different idea because when you develop these parent functions for each of your sides of your mind, as you go on the path to integration and enlightenment, uh, then you end up uh, having, letting go of your pride and your insecurity and then gaining uh, absolute humility. Uh, you also gain maturity, uh, wisdom ultimately uh, from your uh, unconscious side of your mind. And then within your conscious, you also gain a sense of personal responsibility. If you lack that sense of personal responsibility as a result of developing your extroverted feeling, well, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a really hard time uh, not being stuck using your introverted intuition or your TI child functions together. And then you end up having a cognitive loop, as a lot of people talk about uh, all the time. And that's where that comes from. So... Um, so uh, Gamoji says, should we use the ESTP type like we use the King Warrior Magician Lover Theory? Should we emulate ESTPs to be manually? No, no, not at all. Uh, will the 16 personality types ever be officially accepted by the scientific community? I don't know, Jan, and frankly, I don't care. I know it's true, so that's good enough for me. And I use it in my daily life, and that's good enough for me. I don't have to worry about what the scientific community says. I could care less. The community will have its own opinion at the end of the day, but uh, from my point of view, I'm just trying to get work done and I'm trying to change lives. I can deal with the paperwork later. I don't really care about the paperwork or the fame or the status. That's not why I'm here. So uh, how does type influence humor? Well, that's a really good question. David, uh, David Knott or David Note uh, says, uh, what, how does type influence humor? I mean, uh, extroverted sensing likes to give people experiences and do things that are unexpected. Whereas introverted sensing can use their humor through expert intuition. And that's kind of where you get that dark, mysterious humor that also people don't expect. But it's basically just abstracting the unexpected or actually bringing the abstract into the concrete in an unexpected way. And that's generally how humor works. And the thing is, is that half the types will receive it one way while other half the types will receive it another. This is why not everybody maintains what you're saying is going to make you happy, et cetera, or, or make, you, make you laugh. Uh, that's why certain comedians are loved by certain kinds of people, you know. Ali Wong, she's an INTJ, so she's going to uh, uh, she's going to be funny the most to SFJ NTP uh, audiences, right? Whereas Rush Limbaugh, even though he's not exactly a comedian, but he's an entertainer, he actually um, you know ha has a similar audience structure. Whereas George Carlin is an ENTP, he has a different audience structure of SFP NTJ Quadra specifically. So again, people naturally through cognitive synchronicity, their jokes are funny to somebody, just may not be to everybody. So the problem is is that most people that are joke that are jokesters and trying to be comedians are TE users and they end up devaluing themselves because their self-worth is tacked on how many people in their audience are laughing at them versus, you know, my point of view as a TI user, if you can make one person laugh, it's worth it. Just like, you know, those of you watching this uh, YouTube channel right now, like thinking about, okay, maybe I want to be a YouTube creator one day. Let me tell you something, folks. If you ever want to become a YouTube creator, just do it. Do you know why? Because if you get just one subscriber, one person that actually enjoys your content, it's worth it. So just keep going. Like don't don't give up on that, you know, and just and just and just keep going and then you'll get better and better and better. I mean, I got a green screen now, which is pretty cool, and I owe it to my team who's been able to help me get to this point because I'll be straight, I'm really bad at this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So just something uh to keep in mind. Um, what type is the best to review an INTJ's complete written inventory for the fourth step and the 12th step uh, uh, program? I, probably their supervisor type according to Socionics. Uh, that's what I would say, General Patton. Um, okay, so let's see. Who would be more compatible with an ENFP female? ISFJ or ESFJ? Uh, manga LS, none of the above for sure. Um, and uh, how are INTPs manipulated by guilt? They are because, uh, because they're afraid of making people feel bad so they can be easily guilted into doing things. Um, 
So, Brazy Free, can you talk about what one can do to hone his expert intuition? Would you recommend meditation or reading? Any thoughts? None of the above, Breezy. Here's how you hone your expert intuition. Go do things you've never done before. The more life experiences you have, the more you can see into the future. Because just like they say in Battlestar Galactica, all that has happened before will happen again. So if you don't know what happened before, e.g. if you don't have enough life experience, how are you going to be able to anticipate or predict new experiences later that haven't happened yet based on alternate realities through your expert intuition? If you don't have a, a, play, a point in space-time that you existed before from which to use as a reference point to prognosticate the future, which means you need more reference points, more points in space-time, more personal experience, and then as a result of that, you'll actually be able to predict the future more accurately. The more you experience yourself, the more you can see into the future as an extroverted intuitive. So, so... The intuitive process is neither one of sense perception nor thinking nor yet feeling, although language shows a regrettable lack of discrimination in this respect. Okay. Um, Maria asks, is it common for you? Uh, okay, yes, I have no problem typing people in K-pop. I have no issue with that. Maria asks, is it common to mistake your inferior function for your parent or hero function? Not really. I've always thought I was a high any user, but after reading more stuff, I started to consider being an ISFJ. Well, okay, Maria, if you're ENTP focused with your cognitive focus and have developed your subconscious, at that point in time, uh, if you have developed your subconscious, uh, then in your more subconscious focused as an ISFJ, your expert intuition has the ability to become aspirational, which actually can make it stronger than a hero function. This is why when you take an MBTI test for the letter dichotomies, while you're in ISFJ, you may end up testing as an ENTP specifically, or even an ENFP, probably likely you no know, ENFP actually, because the letter dichotomies are just that screwed up that you'd actually be able to like have that figured out. So. I, I would think that that would be, that would be a thing. Um, can INTJs get nostalgic? Eh, not really that much. Uh, they're more, I mean, they get nostalgic if people around them are getting nostalgic. Um, so INFP, INTJ relationship, will that work? Yeah, it'll work provided like, you know, they're not trying to out selfish each other or trying to put their own status above the other person. Uh, that's, that's a big important thing. Um, how can INTJ learn social rules and skill? Uh, through practice, basically, and just create a system around social rules and uh, just keep track of everything and devote yourself to it and eventually you will learn it. Um, but then again, that might be like a waste of time. So, so all right, uh, let's see here. Is it uh, good to develop feeling as an INTJ? Uh, developing feeling as an INTJ, literally all it is is just you achieving more and more, and then you feel good about yourself based on your achievements. That's all that is. Like this whole like, oh, INTJs, you know, they have a T letter and not an F letter, so that means they're thinkers and are not very good at like emotions and feelings and like because they are that way well you know they're just you know that's why they're basically soulless people i'm like wow what a horrible stereotype that's like the most annoying thing in the world and like not helpful either don't have that point of view, folks. Don't have that stereotypical point of view. Get away from the MBTI letter dichotomies. They're just not accurate. Recognize that while INTJ has a T in it, they're feelers because they have FI childs, right? And as much as an INFJ, which has an F letter, are actually thinkers because they have TI child, right? Because an introverted thinking or introverted feeling function, it means you're actually a failure. This is why I actually go away from the letters as much as possible and as much as uh, socionics goes away from the letters, you know. But the thing is, is that everyone's so used to using the letter dichotomies. That's why we use them anyway. That's all it is. And it's good for SEO. Let's be straight. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway. Okay, so let's see. What are the pitfalls that befall an ISFP and an, and an INTP in a relationship? Uh, the ISFP might forget to make the uh, INTP too comfortable or like they basically accuse each other of being childish. That could be like probably the biggest pitfall I'd say. Um, and uh, Daniel Karayuki says, uh, since 
ISTPs are weak to ENFPs. Does that mean INFPs and INTPs are weak to ESFPs or ESTPs? Absolutely it does and vice versa. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Ryan Whiteman says, how compatible is the third relationship with social compatibility for romantic compatibility? Well, Ryan Whiteman, statistically speaking, the third highest compatibility in romantic compatibility is actually the most common marriage statistically amongst all of the types. It is the most common marriage. Uh, this is like ISFJs getting married to ENTJs, for example. It's super common. Or ISFPs getting married to uh, ENTPs. Again, super common, right? So I would say it's pretty, uh, it's pretty socially compatible. Um, so people are always asking me, are you okay, even when I don't think anything's wrong at all with me? Is this a common INTP thing? Yeah, because you have SE Trickster and you're probably walking around with uh, uh, RBF all day long, which is very typical of NTs. And then people are like, oh, are you okay? And it's like, yeah, I'm fine. Leave me alone. Like, seriously, I'm good. No need to uh, listen to anyone else about that. So uh, Princess T, ENFJ and ESTJ relationship. Yeah, it can be a thing. Um, and uh, does INFP really have a chance with ISTJ? No, no, it kind of really doesn't. That's just gonna be very painful. And they're gonna like out selfish each other and my comfort is more than your comfort and my achievements, I need to get more achievements than you. And they put their status over each other. I don't recommend that relationship. So, and uh, John Bodine says, can NIFE users sort of construct NE with embodying the person with FE, then use NI as if you were then, basically you inhabit them with FE and then you become them using NI, which is which becomes NE, kind of. That's actually a good point, John Bodine. Uh, you can do, it's called cognitive emulation. That is basically the emulation process. And that's usually how people uh, are able to emulate their lower functions, especially the trickster function. So excellent for uh, uh, realizing that that's the key to uh, cognitive emulation. I think that's pretty cool uh, that you brought that up. So good point, Mr. John, that's awesome. Uh, so let's see here. What are the disadvantages of an ENFJ and an ENFP relationship? There's not very many disadvantages provided the ENFJ is not being codependent and a doormat and the ENFP is being very charitable and they're holding each other accountable without being avoidant or anxious in their attachment style, but both have secure attachment style. That's what I recommend. Uh, ENTP INFJ or ENTP INFP marriages, gouge potato, I would say run from the, for the hills in that relationship. But ultimately it is possible provided the INFP is not actually an INFP, but an INFJ, right? So let's see, uh, and I, okay. How can someone tell a firm that they have developed their subconscious and or unconscious? This is actually covered heavily uh, in uh, a little bit in season 17, but heavily in season 19. I recommend checking out season 19. Um, Chris, try, let's see here. Okay, hi again, Chase. Thinking of sharing one of your lectures at my high school sometime next year through my own unique presentation, thinking of human attraction dynamics. Thoughts, chat, and Chase? I mean, go ahead and share my content. Just don't claim it's yours. I get little, little cranky with people using my intellectual property against my will, or at least not asking permission ahead of time. So just be careful with that. Can ENTPs get paranoid? Yes, they can. They're pretty paranoid all the time. NTs are paranoid in general. That's just what we do. Uh, dystopia, if you could combine any four cognitive functions in whichever way you wanted, all axes and whatnot aside, what would they be? Answer me, I'll die. Um, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, is that everything is in balance and I kind of like my own cognitive function combination the way that I have for myself as an ENTP. I'm pretty happy with what I got, so. Um, Swift Eagle with a super chat. Uh, ISTJ versus INTJ at work, and how would each play the game at their workplace? Well, both of them, uh, the ISTJ would basically use the rules uh, to get around uh, the workplace uh, and try to enforce the rules, get the rules enforced on the INTJ if they didn't like each other. Uh, the INTJ would just basically go out of the way to outperform and outachieve. Uh, the ISTJ, but the ISTJ could technically outlast the INTJ, 
and it sometimes could possibly even engineer things in such a way to take credit for the INTJ's work, which leads to even more animosity and pain between the both of them. So that is kind of a thing, so be aware of that. But that's generally how they'd approach it. Um, so if they're like going to have like a duel of the fates with each other, you know, so, uh, uh, cue up the music while I'm talking, you know what I'm saying? Are INTJs good at sales? Yes, they are. They are very good at sales. Um, Tips for making an INFJ, INFJ relationship work. Yes, uh, run, run quickly. Uh, that's why I would say that. But typically INFJ, INFJ relationships aren't actually what's happening. INFJ, INFJ relationships trigger each other too much that's probably not happening and it's probably that one of those INFJs is actually an INFP or an ENFP typically in that situation. So there's a good chance of su super high compatibility, not actually what it is. Um, can a TE trickster succeed in academics yes they can but they're usually better off being like an autodidact see the movie goodwill hunting for what i'm talking about because he's an infj um so let's see here how sensitive are se users compared to si users that's a really good question um uh, it's more of a uh, se user sensitivity is more of like um uh, it's like a delayed uh, a delayed sensitivity where uh, they're not as, uh, it's like a, so like for example, uh, we could talk about like my relationship with Railgun, right? Railgun is a fantastic woman, um, but uh, Railgun is going out of her way to make me comfortable at all times, but then she's like, okay, well, I made you really, really comfortable, now it's my turn to be comfortable, right? And so it's, it's more like delayed sensitivity. They're still sensitive, it's just that they're prioritizing my sensitivities first, and once they know that I'm not sensitive at a moment because I'm comfortable, then it's like, okay, now it's my turn to be comfortable. And that's basically how extroverted sensing comfort works uh, compared to introverted sensing. It's just, you know, what's what's priority? You know, this person or is it myself, basically? Whereas an introverted sensor would provide it, would prioritize their own comfort before looking at someone else's comfort, basically. And until they are comfortable themselves, they're triggered because it's like this mental block or this mental haze or this mental cloud that's getting in the way. And the only thing they can focus on is getting comfortable. And then once they have reached that level of comfort, then from that point, they can help other people get comfortable too, but only until they are themselves comfortable first, where it's the exact opposite with an extroverted sensor, basically. Okay, so let's see. Why are ESTJs affiliative and not ENTJs? Because ESTJs like doing their duty and following the rules. That's why. Uh, ENTJs not necessarily. What are the pros and cons for ENTP and ESTP relationships? Well, there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons. Uh, one of the biggest cons is that they both have TI parents and they may get into like a very hot debate over you know who's right about something. Uh, but usually though, as long, because the ESTP is still a mirror because it's STP NFJ Quadra and the ENTP is a mimic, uh, it's best if one of them, uh, like if the ENTP, uh, you know, takes responsibility for their actions first, the ESTP will usually follow in kind. So it really can reduce conflict over time. Not only that, both of them have FE child, but that FE child with this divine power can actually help develop the FI trickster of the, each of the other people so that they can actually reach a higher level of moral standards uh, based on that cognitive emulation that uh, Mr. John Bodine had uh, mentioned earlier. So that's basically kind of, you know, some of the pros and cons of ENTP, ESTP relationships. And uh, Breezy, again, what is the distinctions between INFJs and INTPs that you think are obvious ways one can spot them? Uh, one knows how to dress and has a sense of fashion and the other does not. I'd, I'd probably leave it there. Um, what is SC inferior's biggest weakness? That's having performance anxiety. Um, does function order help one meditate? Uh, I'm a high NI user and meditate daily. Uh, it can. I mean, what are you meditating for? Like, what, what's what's the reason you're meditating? That that would be my question. Um, Leanne Litzenberger. Um, oh, hold on. Tina Protsenko uh, with another super chat. How to get a committed INTJ to take a risk and go for a relationship? Uh, the INTJ needs to know that that person that they're going for is basically uh, comfortable with them. That's really all it is. It's it's a level of comfort, uh, Tina, and uh, and they actually have to like want to. And what what makes it a risk? I have to I have to question that 
Now, now if they're an ISTJ, that's a completely different story if they're actually an ISTJ because ISTJs don't take risks, whereas INTJs are actually more willing to take risks. So, but then again, you know, there's risks of covert contracts in there too. Everyone can covert contracts, it's just how they covert contract. That's kind of the issue. Um, how can you tell TE Trickster from TE Nemesis? Use cognitive access analysis for that, Breezy. That's season 18 content. Uh, okay. Uh, any tips in typing someone that could be an INFJ or INFP? Use the uh, type grid, uh, CSI, um, and uh, we'll get there. So let's see. Will someone stop being shadow focused if they develop their subconscious enough? Not necessarily stop, but the answer to that question is technically yes. Yes, uh, M-A-456-C-H-O-Z, yes. The answer to that question is yes, ultimately. What is the conflict between ESTP and ENTJ? Well, the ESTP thinks the ENTJ is trying to manipulate them by having these arbitrary rules that don't mean anything. That's how they, they're going to react negatively to that. So, all right, so Aiden Washneys. I love Aiden Washneys. To get good info from an INFJ, should I ask how they feel or what they think about something? Always ask them what they think. Do not ask an INFJ how they feel. If you do that, then you're going to cause them to feel guilty, and then you just start it off on the negative foot. Always ask them what they think. Engage the TI child. Uh, meditate to calm my mind. It tends to be noisy. Noise in the mind is not necessarily a bad thing, but why do you need to calm your mind? Uh, why is that? Um, uh, Stellar Memer, hey Chase, what happens when INTPs and ISTPs team up? Well, basically, uh, you know, the world ends uh, with flame and fire and, uh, you know, and then it's a brand new tomorrow and everyone is saved for all of eternity. No, no, that's not what happens. Uh, they're the dynamic duo that can solve problems provided they're having a shoulder to shoulder and focusing their issues not at each other and something else and something amazing can happen. So, uh, Wait, did he say INFJ and INTP is good? Yes, that's a great relationship, KR. Um, so, and where's Tina's? Uh, because the person is in a long-term relationship and is 20 years older. Well, that that happens. Um, uh, and Tina, if you have drama, you can take it to the CSJ Discord. Just go to csjoseph.life forward slash social, join a Discord server, and join the women's uh, support group, and you can have a conversation about that there anytime you want. Um, yeah, I'm an INFJ. I need to trust someone with given info. Recovering soul, that's absolutely correct. Um, why do people judge SE Trickster so much? It's for the same reason, Cody, that everyone judges FI Trickster or any tr Trickster function. It's a problem for everybody. Um, what are my long-term goals for csjoseph.life? Uh, Breezy, you can find that out on Patreon. That's all explained in the Patreon intro video. And after someone becomes a patron, they get the, uh, the uh, extra video, basically. Okay, so what cognitive functions influence IQ? I have no idea because I hate IQ. I think it's dumb. Um, how to get ENTP with TE critic interested in Jungian typology? Uh, reach inside their soul and and yank them out of it basically and read their mail to them and then they'll have no choice but to accept that it's true uh are esfps considered alpha or beta usually beta because they're kind of more of a feminine type uh, best friend types for estp uh basically mm, you could say strong stjs or strong charitable nfps uh it it, it, it typically would be for that it just depends on how how developed they are themselves tasha ross uh, okay, Nathan Bird, do you have any advice for getting over TI inferior for an ENFJ? Yes, I do, and my advice is is to verify literally everything you think, especially your beliefs. You know, stop trying to get everybody else to listen to you all the time, because TI inferior has a problem where they just don't really listen to others. If the TI inferior would spend time actually listening to others and accepting input from others, they'd act and then verifying that information, spend time researching and verifying, they would actually be way better off overall and some of the most successful of all the types. It's absolutely critical. Um, how can you save an ISTJ from the lazy route you talked about in the Who Are the ISTJs video? By making them as uncomfortable as possible and telling them if they don't stop, they're going to be unwanted forever, basically and uh, while simultaneously saying that they have no status and that they'll be publicly shamed. Sometimes you gotta be willing to publicly shame an ISTJ to get them to change. So, 
same thing that you would do. Uh, INFP and INTJ marriage, yes, that actually works. It's it is it is workable. Um, and uh, Aiden is back with what issues will an ISFP ISFJ relationship uh, run into? Mm, not very many. They're super compatible. Uh, it's just that they both want their alone time, and sometimes uh, one is expecting attention from the other. That's just not really going to be there. But that's probably about it. Uh, another issue is is that the ISFJ may criticize the ISFP for being bad at money, uh, and uh, that could also be an issue because the ISFJ feels unsafe with all the risks that the ISFP takes, basically. Otherwise, it's a pretty good relationship. Um, so, do you... Okay, again, I'm not going to talk about personality disorders. I'm not a psychiatrist. I, I have no idea about that, so don't don't bother asking questions about that. Uh, ESFP and ENFP compatibility advantages and disadvantages. It's the same. It's the same answer I would give for ENTP and ESTP that I did earlier. Um, how do hero functions view trickster functions? Example: SE hero views into the uh, INFP's uh, SE trickster. Uh, Zachary Frenier, they see it as cute. That's how I'd answer that. Uh, let's see what else I want to answer here. Pros and cons of ENFP, INFP relationship that's mostly just cons and throw that in the dumpster as soon as you can. But chances are one of those NFPs might actually be an NFJ. So I suggest you verify before going dumpster mode on that one. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Alpha Quadra doesn't have much to do with, you know, alphas and betas, etc. cetera. Um, so let's see. Noticeable differences between ISFJ and INFJ. INFJs do it what they want. ISFJs just do what they should. Um, uh, let's see. Do you think personality type go with certain blood types? Uh, we don't. There's probably a correlation there, but we just don't know what that is. Uh, we should probably check that out. If there's two people the same type and both are shadow focused, could intimate relationship in that case? No, probably not. Um, so do INTJs react better to space or affection? Probably react better to space because they're usually the sources of affection themselves. I think they need to have more space, uh, Tina, to answer your question. Uh, what, what would the SI angel attitude be? Someone who's just doing their duty such that they can protect the entire world. Um, that's how that would work. Uh, is the Delta Quadra the most elitist? Uh, the most elitist types are basically ESJs with SE critic. So I'm, I'm not sure how that would go there. How to help an ENTJ female be more mature, uh, give them books to read, uh, help them achieve. And uh, then also show them that just other people are wanting bad things and they need to be more responsible with what they want to do and be less impulsive. Uh, ESFJ male and ESFP female marriage compatibility. It's excellent. It's second highest. I'd recommend it. Um, I'm a part of a typology community, Kevin Davidson, and I was wondering if you'd give us a lecture to us as a lot of socionists, and we were trying to fully have something to challenge them with. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Uh, email me at chase at csjoseph.life for that, Kevin, I guess. Um Breezy free, how are you able to know what to parse from your sources? Like, how do you know what is good info from Fro Jung and Freud and what you don't agree with? It's based on practical application. If I can practically apply what they're teaching, then I'll keep it and add it into my theory. If it's not apply applicable, then I'm not going to use it because until it's applicable, the chances are it's not true. It's the same thing Bruce Lee did when he was developing Jeet Kune Do. Uh, his JKD uh, Kung Fu style. It's the same approach that he applied as part of his inner philosophy. Um, let's see. Kevin Davidson, I already answered that question. Uh, is there any correlation between MBTI and astrology? No, not that we know of because astrology is limited. Astrology uh, needs to add four more months to the calendar than it already has and uh, because the 12 months uh, is not exactly ideal. Uh, but then again, people are like, well, wait a minute, that sounds a little bit weird, CSJ. How is that possible? And like, indeed, how is that possible? You might want to think on that a little bit. Uh, best type for chess? Uh, basically, NETI, I would say, is better for chess. What's the best way to develop expert intuition, uh, inferior SE nemesis? 
Oof. Um, hmm. Ryan, I would say uh, it depends. Are you an ISTJ or an ISFJ, right? Uh, but ultimately, just make yourself as desirable as possible. Uh, that's basically all I could really say for that, is make yourself as uh, uh, desirable as possible. And Ahmed, yes, physical attraction is related to cognitive synchronicity. Yes, it is. This is why... Uh, this is why SENI or uh, you know perception functions are much more important from a sexual compatibility standpoint than decision making functions. Um, can INTJ, INFJ get depressed if their goals are not falling into plan like they wished? Yes, of course they can. More so INTJ though, but yes, absolutely. IQ is practical, so why dismiss it? It's practical, sure, but it's also inaccurate. So like. I mean, I have an IQ of 108 according to the test, so what does that tell you? Um, I've been thinking about personality types and its relationship with disorders, and I'm seeing more and more clustering with certain types. Of course, to prove this, I need funding. Uh, yeah, again, I'm just not down for, uh, even though you're talking to Gremlins 347, Mr. A YouTube channel, I'm not down because I'm not a psychiatrist. Uh, and uh, let's see here. How would an ENTP without developed TI parent act? Uh, basically, they'd be the ultimate doormat, surrendering to everybody else's desires and what everybody else values, and they'd also end up getting caught up in dogma, which is re living with the results of other people's thinking. Steve Jobs actually said that in his commencement speech before he died. Uh, Do not live your life by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't be caught by it. And that's exactly how that works. And I suggest getting away from that. FJBZ3 says, if two people are the most compatible types that want to shadow focus, does this make them less compatible? No, it doesn't. Because the other person is subconscious focus actually makes them more compatible. So that's a different approach to that. So, okay. What is the difference between comfort, being comfortable and how you feel? Uh, there's a huge difference. Uh, how you feel is how you value yourself and, uh, and then what your level of comfort is is something completely different. So the word feel is too much of a homonym or a, uh, or a homophone uh, to be utilized in the English language to describe those two things even though they're completely separate. This is where the English language fails uh, consistently, especially with psychological concepts. We need a better language. How exactly can an INTJ male do the siren seduction style when it's female only? Isn't the male siren the rake? No, the male siren is not the rake. Uh, they can go get a six pack and basically become Arnold Schwarzenegger. And there you have a male siren. Congratulations. You know, What's my favorite movie? Uh, it's probably Arrival with Jeremy Renner or it's Inc, which came out in 2009, I would say. Um, anything that explains extroverted intuition and how it works mechanically is basically my favorite kind of content. Uh, let's see. Um, how do I know if I've gained shadow integration as an INTJ? Uh, if you're very good at casting vision, that's how you do it. Uh, have you given any thought to sleep, consume, play, blast in relation to typology? No, I haven't. I should probably think about that a little bit more. Um, how to tell if you're an INTP or INTJ? Use the type grid. Um, Oh, we got uh, good old Shadow Quick. I love Shadow Quick. It's one of my favorite. Does T Trickster struggle with doing research, like reading through and gathering from sources? Yes, it does. Yes, it does, Shadow Quick. Yes, it does. Why does your uh, Ethan Euro? Why does your audience still struggle to dis to type despite all the information that's put out there? Because uh, this is one of my hypocrisies. I can communicate the truth, but it doesn't mean it's always going to be received. And a lot of what I say, quite frankly, is impractical because when you talk about concepts like control versus movement, like what does that mean? So we're actually going to be re-releasing the type grid and re-releasing a lot of our content to make it lay like, more of a reader's digest format to make it so that more lay people can actually use this stuff. Uh, because I even, even though I'm trying to make it more practical, honestly, I've made it kind of impractical as well. So we're going to increase the practicality by changing definitions of terms. And all this will be outlined in our book that, that it's coming out very soon. Uh, and the book's like like the super glossary of all these terms and how to use the type grid and upgrades and updates and all of the terminology that we use to make it so much easier to use because a lot of people have a hard time telling the difference to these things. So, Also, no one knows who they are. And that also makes it a lot harder as well. Um, okay. So, 
If Throid observed and tested his actual theory, what makes his definitions and applications less valid? It's not necessarily that it's less valid. I mean, but the thing is, too, like you can imagine a test and create a, a test, you know, like a study for an outcome that you desire and kind of stack it in your way. I'm not saying that Freud did that, but it can't happen. Uh, it's called confirmation bias, right? And if you're playing with concepts that only you know, I mean, you're more likely to commit confirmation bias. I mean, I, I had that issue myself. That's why I made the lecture How to Avoid Mistyping. I recommend you watch it since season 15. So. How to motivate an INTJ when they are extremely stressed and stuck in a rut. Are you sure they're not an ISTJ? You might want to look at that. Um, okay, have you read the book stories of your life where the story arrival came from? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, if someone is shadow focused since childhood, could as any nemesis critic be better than his hero and parent? No, not better. It's just that it would be more useful. It's like you have a toolbox or grab bag of tools. Some tools you're more familiar with using, others you're not as familiar, but eventually you become familiar with all of the tools, basically. That's that's really the difference. Um, okay. Will two of a type share general political views? No, that's human nature or human nurture aid in Washington is they could actually be completely different. I know an INFJ feminist and I know an INFJ anti-feminist and putting them both in a room is a very explosive situation. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what person I type are narcissists? Uh, any type can be a narcissist. Um, uh, so my opinion on the original Greek temperaments, only if they match uh, Plato, then I'm fine with them, like sanguine, choleric, etc. As long as they match what uh, Plato said in Plato's Republic, where he's talking about guardians, artisans, thinkers, and idealists specifically, then I'm cool with it. But so many people have different interpretations of the Greek temperaments, so then I'm like not exactly like sure about that, but yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a different thing. Um, how does an ESTP develop chastity by focusing all of your desire on one person and keeping it on that one person, provided that one person is loyal to you, loyal to you such in a way that they're willing to drop anything at the at the drop of a hat, should you ask it of them, should you need that of them, basically, that's how you develop chastity. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know what you mean by that, Kevin Davidson. Why is my theory based per, uh, based purely on expected range behavior archetype, like interaction style, which ISTPs have actually been informed of different from what they are projected to be? Maybe because they're not ISTPs, or maybe you're not sure what the definition of informative is. I, either one, I, I probably would say, uh, is likely in that case. What would make an INTJ stuck in a rut? Uh, basically procrastinating. 
what would the attitude of SI critic be when talking about duty? They just have this insanely high standard of duty that uh, they kind of have no idea why that is the case. It's just this insanely high standard of duty. So, um, well, I mean, breezy. If people are going to be insulted when I tell the truth, that's not that's on them. That's not on me, basically. Um, Well, I mean, Kevin Davidson, I'm not worried that if I dismiss the original definitions of an original psychologist, if they're actually wrong. So if they're wrong, then I'm going to dismiss them. It's not it's not that hard, you know. Uh, so it just is what it is. In order for me to be an ENTP, the definition of an introverted intuition can't be what it is. I have to switch NE's definition with NI in order to be an ENTP, which guess what? That's just the reality situation especially when I'm sitting down at a table full of introverts and I think I'm an INTJ, yet I'm the one who's like obviously expert in initiating with everybody. And it's like, yeah, I'm actually initiating. Well, wait, you're expert. Wait a minute, I'm extrovert? I thought I was an introvert. How does that work? Well, it's because ENTPs are the most introverted of the extroverts. How is that possible? Because we get uncomfortable when we're around new people and new situations and we just don't really want to engage people because we're in our ISFJ subconscious for self-protection mode and to bring us out of our shell. We need someone to introduce themselves to us to make us comfortable, right? So that's kind of like where this weirdness comes from. All right, so let's see. Um, Chase, what do you think about dominant introverted functions bias? Do all dominant introverted functions uh, bias towards, uh, let's see, uh, what they are good at while dominant extroverted functions are more objective? Not necessarily the case. Uh, but uh, I have heard of that. Uh, I can note that extroverted functions can be less objective because TE heroes, for example, are all about the rules and the process and a way of doing things, all about beliefs. And as much as TE parent could be all about beliefs and they're not necessarily as objective, right? So it, it's not, it, it's, it's mostly true. It's truthy, but it's not true basically. So, so. Can ISTPs with developed N E F E act like NFJs? Yes, Xavier. One, two, three, four, five, two. Yes, they can. Um, uh, so, what evidence do you have to prove against the original meaning of the superego versus yours when the nurture presented as his has been further tested through the Oedipus complex? Uh, well, I mean, like, like if you're looking at the work of Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette, and they have their four uh, archetypes of mature masculine king, warrior, magician, lover, and they're talking about, like the Oedipal child, you know, from their uh, Oedipus uh, complex analysis, I would say it's more nurtural. I'm staying away from nurture and focusing strictly on nature. While nurture can impact nature, it's more of like a yin and yang equilibrium, like a, like a Venn diagram. You have nature, you have nurture, two circles coming together, and then you have a human being, right? That's the approach that I'm taking. So I'm not necessarily saying that like, you know, I mean, like, um, um, like Freud's, you know, definition of superego, that's his definition, but it may be applied in a different way. Whereas my definition of superego is applied in a different way. Although I maintain that my definition of superego is actually accurate, whereas his is not. Because you, you, when you look at four sides of the mind and then you combine that with the inverse theory, you find out that, yes, there are four sides of the mind, right? And the superego is basically a superfluous ego. That's why it's called a superego. It's superfluous, right? It's like an extra ego, basically, which is where the source of the human condition comes from. I recommend reviewing my lectures in season 17, episodes one through five uh, for, you know, the study as to how all that works. Um, so let's go... Um, uh, I, Manga LS, I'm not entirely sure uh, you are only attracted to those types. If you are, you are, that's fine. But how do you know that they're type and how do you know that you're your type, basically? Let, have you verified against the type grid to know for sure? Um, so, and uh, my test results say I'm an ESFP, but everyone says I'm an ENFP, um, which are likely to hold opinion regardless of facts. Um, definitely that would be TE child and TE inferiors are always going to value opinion over facts. So FI parent and FI heroes, Aiden Washington is. Um, so, but yeah. 
Okay, well, I think that's it for today, folks. Uh, thank you all for being, uh, uh, you know, here uh, with me this evening. Gonna have to cut this particular uh, stream short uh, because I have a lot of work to do. I'm trying to work on how to social engineer INTPs, and I got a little bit of extra wet work to do uh, with getting some of the, uh, um, you know, some of the SEO and the tags and the YouTube descriptions of some of the videos recently, and get them on the podcast. I need to handle all that work because I'm falling behind. So. Uh, with that, folks, uh, thank you all for coming to my Q&A this evening. It's been fantastic. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I'll see you folks on the next stream, which maybe it's the CSJ conference, the Ruby conference. It's on Thursday. Uh, or otherwise, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. So all well, that being said, folks, you all folks have a good night. And uh, sorry about the stream like going down midway. It just kind of happens, and it's really annoying, but it is what it is. So anyway, you all have a good night, and I'll talk to you later.